For those who prefer Linux, this is Category 5 Technology TV, starring Robbie Ferguson, Eric Kidd, Rachel Zhu, Hilary Rumble, Krista Wells. Broadcasting from Barrie, Ontario, Canada, get ready for a unique and interactive viewing experience. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to the show. It's episode number 234 of Category 5 Technology TV, Tuesday, March the uh, 13th, 2012. Happy St. Patrick's Day, a little early, but uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Mm -hmm. Howdy. Yeah. Alrighty. How's it going? <laughs> I was just gapped out there a second. Hey, everybody. Alrighty, so coming up in the newsroom, a new spec free. 3D TV that tracks the movements of viewers' faces has hit UK shops. And Panda Lab's website was hacked by members of the anonymous hacker group. Oh dear. And new privacy settings in the upcoming release of Ubuntu 12.04 will give users added control over what activities are recorded. And a robotic cheetah has broken speed. The record for legged robots. So stick around, these stories are coming up later in the show. Rachel, what's going on? Oh, not too much, not too much. Nothing very exciting. Haven't yeah. won the lottery this week. Not this week. Good to see everybody. Hey, uh, Dennis Kelly, Chris Reich, Garvey, Pyrus Rock. Incidentally, Pyrus Rock, uh, I heard, did a little bit of walking tonight to be here with us. Yeah, to watch the show. eight kilometers. Eight kilometers. Because his car was in the auto shop and he just couldn't miss the show. So that works out to 4.9709659594 miles. Good stuff. In case you don't know what a kilometer is. Does he get any viewer points for being that faithful? I suppose now that you've said it, we kind of have to, right? <laughs> you owe me Pyro's Rock. Ten viewer points. Oh. Yeah. Oh, boy, we've got a, a, an exciting and busy show tonight. Uh, Category 5 is now a member of the Tech Podcast Network. Uh, find out more about them at techpodcasts.com. Uh, also, we have our mobile site up and running. It's mobile.cat5.tv check out that site if you're using a mobile device lots to talk about tonight i have uh we're gonna be talking about uh, some smart device issues that you may have with your wi-fi uh, also we're gonna be talking about thank you php very excited to be jumping into a new series uh, we're gonna be taking you through beginner and intermediate uh, intermediate php development tonight we're so gonna be starting for beginners what does php even stand for I don't even know what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a language. It's a programming language. Do you even know? I don't. No, what does it stand for? I mean, does it stand is it an acronym? Chris Reich says push here please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Robbie's new site, he still wants you to be sending in postcards. Definitely. For his uh, postcard map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make it sound so exciting. <laughs> Send in your postcards because we love to receive your postcards. Look at all these. Was that three? All of these. Well, I got more, too. That's just, that's just kind of what I picked up there, but... Anyway, here's how you can send in your postcard. Uh, send it to Category 5 Technology TV, Postal Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. We would love to receive your postcards. It's a very cool thing. Uh, anyways, as I was saying, PHP, we're going to be learning, we're going to be starting a series tonight. And tonight we're looking at arrays and the magic thereof. So stick around. We're going to be learning all about that stuff. Also, uh, how to protect our, our systems with strong, strong passwords. St. Patrick's Day is coming up this weekend. Mm -hmm. As you know, my name is Robbie Ferguson. Okay. Now, the, the, the show is rated G. So I was like, okay, well, we got to open a can of ginger ale. But here's the just thing. Just because it's green? No, it's no, a it's green can. Yeah, that's just... That's irony. No, but we're, it's a G-rated show. We're not allowed to drink beer on the show, right? So, so it looks like beer. Well, this is the thing. Chat room, I want you to be very, very quiet. This is our little secret. Because you, you know that this is ginger ale. But for the rest of the show, there's going to be people coming in the chat room. And they're going to say, what are they doing? Are they drinking beer? 
Garby, I want you to name the first word that comes to your head. Tell me right now. And I need everybody to be very quiet in the chat room about this. Garby's word is now? Okay. So if anybody comes into the chat room at all tonight and says, hey, are they drinking beer or anything with regards to that? The word of the day is now. So shout that word out in the chat room. Flood it. See? There we go. Hey, okay. man. You'll never know. It's our little secret. <laughs> Any fellow Irish out there? Okay. Good evening. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Cheers. Now, when Eric's on the show and he's got this, it's probably not ginger <laughs> ale. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. We've got some viewer testimonials that came in this week uh, and over the past little while. Uh, maybe I'll get you to bring those up and we'll just uh, give shouts out. We love receiving your viewer testimonials, and uh, you can send those to us at cat5.tv slash testimonials if you'd like to tell us what you think of the show. Can I get you uh, to bring up those viewer testimonials? We've got a few there, Rachel. All righty. Let's see what our viewers have to say. All right, which one, Rob? There's like this massive list. Well, I'll start at the top. We'll work our way down. We'll read three of them tonight. All righty. So from Cyber Smurf, I stumbled across Category 5 TV last week while web smurfing for info <laughs> on Linux and VirtualBox. What a fantastic site. The episode notes and links multiply the value of the site by a factor of 10. And the em emphasis on community experience in the episodes is wonderful. Robbie is a multifaceted genius. <sighs> did it really say that or did you just add that Thank in? Thank you, Cyber Smurf. Thank you for your vote of confidence. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as she sees Robbie and, and anything to do with a compliment in that sentence, uh. she'll, she'll just and laugh. Eric, Hillary, Kristen, Rachel truly compliment the episodes with their individual <laughs> tone. <laughs> Looking forward to joining the chat room <laughs> for my first live show. So maybe he'll be there. Thanks, Cyber Smurf. Week. Hope you're able to join us tonight. But if yep. not, we'll uh, we'll certainly see you soon. Uh, next one's from Aaron. He says, "I consider myself a fairly tech savvy actor, and jumped at the Microsoft Life Cam Studio when I realized it did 1080p. Your post completely helped me in figuring out why the frame rate was so bad. Now I'm using Virtual Dub and this webcam for taped auditions, and couldn't be more pleased. Thank you so much, Roberto. Awesome. Um." Next this one looks kind of long, eh? From, do you still want me to read it? Well, uh, I'll skim the top part there. Uh, this is from Toby. Toby, uh, nice to see you from Wales. Uh, starts by saying that uh, that they were having some trouble on their computer getting into the chat room and everything a couple weeks ago. Uh, second paragraph. So I took your advice from one of your episodes and installed Debian, and the speed I now have is amazing. No bugs. It's perfect, and I'm now ready for your next episode on Tuesday. And Bean in chat was really awesome. Nice to have a show just related to Linux and geek questions. I like how you're always ahead. The viewers have a question. You know the answers without using Google. <laughs> Not always. Not no always. No idea how you remember everything. Ha, ha, ha. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to you and everyone at Category 5 for giving us a great show. You're all awesome, especially Rachel. See you next week in chat. <laughs> 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 Thank you, everybody, for your viewer testimonials. We love to hear from you. We love uh, when you lift us up and tell us what you think of the show. Cat5.tv slash testimonials to send yours in. Uh, we've got to take a quick break, and we will be right back. And don't go away, because tonight, again, we're going to be looking at PHP. We've got lots of great information and your questions. Uh, so stick around. See you in the chat room at Category5.tv. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com this is Category 5 Technology TV, and we're online at www.category5.tv. Send in your questions live at Category5.tv. 
How many times can I say Category 5.tv in a yeah. sentence? Send in your questions. Jump into the chat room. We'd love to have you there. Always fun to interact. All right, so we do have a question here from Raven Lord. Hey, Raven Lord. He said, hello, Robbie F. Category 5 team. What DD wort? Is that a wort? DD WRT. We'll just, we'll just tell her it's a wort. <laughs> do I it's need DD wart. for my WNR 3500L router? Okay, keep, keep that up on the screen because I'm probably going to need those specs. I'm going to head over to DD WRT, DD WRT.com. Let's take a quick look here. Okay, where, where I want to go here is the router database up at the top here. See that? Okay, let's hop in there. Let's do a search for that particular model of router. Sorry, what was that, Rachel? It was a WNR. 3500L. There it is, the Netgear. WNR 3500. Okay, so I clicked on it. It's a Broadcom 4718A. That's the chipset. It's going to tell us everything that we need to know. And here are the files that we need. So, you'll notice the first thing here is a special file for initial flashing. Because here's the thing, sometimes you'll run into this with these, with these routers when you want to upgrade to DDWRT as your firmware. That's an open source firmware that gives you tons of commercial level features for free. Sometimes you'll come across this where there's an initial file for flashing. What that does is it basically, it wipes out your, uh, the flash that's built in and then gives you the ability to upgrade to one of the, uh, the full size, uh, cur uh, basically the DDWRT installation. So let's take a look. So first of all, you're going to need that file, right? Netgear, da -da -da -da, special file for initial flashing. From there, it becomes up to you. Okay. Now it's the NEWD uh, version, and the database tells us that's what we want, so that's good. So what you want to know is what's, what scale of uh, DDWRT do you want? Because this is an amazing, you know, excellent router, you can fit the big generic in there. So you might download that for the most, you know, the biggest possibility as far as feature set goes. And then there are other options as well, VPN, voice over IP, mini, but I would say just go with the big, and then that gives you all the you know the the major features. You can do the comparison as per the episode a couple weeks ago. We were talking about DDWRT and and uh, being able to compare that. Um, so take a look at episode number two thirty two, I believe it was. And if not, you can search our site as well for DD-WRT. All right, I'll post a link for you to the uh, router database. But essentially, it's DD-WRT.com. Click on the router database and then do a search for your particular model of router. That's going to make sure that you get the, the proper files. Okay. Uh, one quick mention as well while I'm on this page for you. You'll notice that this router is supported by multiple different versions, different builds of uh, DD-WRT. Okay. So if, if necessary or if you have trouble with a particular build, you can revert to an older build or something like that. You'll notice that each of them is labeled as in beta. So you may encounter issues. You may not. So give it a go. Let us know how it goes. Do be, in, be mindful that uh, you're probably, you know, you're, you're, you want to be careful when you do a, f a flash like this because you could damage the router in that you're wiping it out and putting in new software, right? So make sure you follow the steps, which is install the, uh, the initial file for flashing and then install from there and just follow the prompts. It's pretty straightforward. And then follow the big generic installation. So good luck. Let us know how it goes, OK? We appreciate that. This is Category 5 Technology TV. And we're online at www.category5.tv. So everyone's talking about how, how can you be wearing that sweater in such a warm day. But I'm saying it's not that warm here yet. It's not. Pretty soon we'll have the central air, though. Yeah, Pyro's Rock said it was 30 degrees when you walked yeah. all the way. Serious. To watch the show. Yeah, it's nothing like that here. It's, it's kind of comfortable under these lights tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Working on our tans. Those in Backstage Pass, you know what I'm talking about. All right. No other questions in the chat room for us tonight. Give you a chance. They're talking about weather, and we just we don't allow that, folks. <laughs> not when Christy's not here. <laughs> What kind of exciting questions you have? Ask something about Rob E. 
<laughs> Ask something to get I'm him not, going. I'm not Robbie with her. I'm Rob Dash E. <laughs> I it's always like call him man. Rob, and so he's Robbie, Robbie. So I always forget, and then I just add the. I kick her in the shins when, she, when she does that, which, which you know, that's that's appropriate. <laughs> when when you whenever you're setting up, I should retry that sentence. Whenever you're installing software, setting yourself up on a website with a login, right? You need to give a password. It's very important that that password be something that's safe. What we're seeing a lot of these days is people tend to, and maybe you're guilty of this as well, we tend to think, well, I don't want to have to remember a thousand passwords, so when I sign up for Twitter, it's the same password as when I signed up for Facebook. And here's the scary thing, it's the same password as when I sign up for my online banking or PayPal. Hope you can see the problem with that. What we've been seeing a lot of is hackers who are taking advantage of the fact that they know that people are doing this kind of thing. So what they do is they hack into some of the easier to hack databases. Maybe you've signed up for just some obscure website to download a program. It required you to, to uh, sign up and maybe you use that exact same password. Well the hackers know, well, this guy's email address is so and so at hotmail.com. So they go to Hotmail, and the, you know they've hacked the database. They've gotten your password. They go to Hotmail. They log in as you. They change your password. So now you can't log into your Hotmail. Then they get all your contacts, and they can spam them. They can do whatever they want, or they can try to hack them. But they now have your email address. So that may be the email address that's associated with your PayPal account. So they go to your PayPal account, and they say, forgot password. And then all of a sudden, they check your Hotmail account, and they've got your password for PayPal, even if it's different from the one that they hacked. So then they can log into your PayPal account, they can transfer funds, they can get into your Twitter account, whatever they want to do. They can do identity theft, financial theft, make purchases, things like that. So it's very important not just to have strong passwords, but to have different passwords for every service that you use. One of the uh, sites that I'd like to show you today is called simply dot. Com, I think it is, yeah, com. But it's spelt a little different. It's spelt kind of the Apache way. S A F E for safe. P A S S W D dot com. And here it is. Now you've seen password generation tools before. What makes Safe Password really interesting is that it makes them so that they're memorable to you, so that it's easier for you to remember the password, but very, very hard for somebody to hack or guess at brute force. So you can select here whether you'd like your password to be easy to remember, whether you'd like it to be all characters, which is the most secure way to do it. But let's say easy to remember, and we'll set the slider here to as many characters as we would like. Let's say just a little more than 10. Use uppercase and lowercase as recommended, and I'll go new password, and that's what it's created for me. So me, in my head, I can see that that is question mark, retro, flare. I could call that RetroFlare9. And in my head, now I've got a way to remember that password, even though it's a, you know, it's a little bit different. It's a little hard to, you know, it'll take you some time. But that gives me some, some way to reference that password. If I try again, or they say RetroFire9, let's generate another one. Make it a little bit longer. New password. 239 question mark smartness. But look at the way that it's laid out. Oh, and I messed it up by mousing over because Chrome can tend to do that. So you see how that works? It creates these easy to remember passwords. We'll say that's Ace Tate, six dollar sign. And that one's strong, so you can make them stronger than that. Now, if we're gonna create really difficult passwords, we can go all characters, most secure. Let's set it up a fairly high number. These, this is what you would use when you're generating databases for your website, things like that. And you'll see that it generates a password that is very strong. Those are ones that you don't necessarily have to remember. You don't need them for your online banking or things like that. You need them for uh, a MySQL connection on your PHP script or something more sophisticated like that where you just need to enter it once. Or if you're, keeping a, if you're using a password memory program, uh, it's an opportunity for you to use very strong passwords that are going to protect you from those kinds of exploits and people being able to hack your password. Very important stuff. Mm -hmm. Questions for us? It's live at category5.tv, or of course you can join us in the chat room. It's at category5.tv on our website, or if you're on Freenode, 
It's the IRC server, irc.freenode.net. Uh, you can also join us in the chat room. It's Category 5. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks for joining us, everybody. My name is Robbie Ferguson. I don't think we got to introduce ourselves yet tonight. That's what got me at the beginning because I'm so used to. I was sitting waiting for I the loop and curveball. Waiting for that old loop. I'm Robbie Ferguson <laughs> and I'm Rachel Schuster. So when it didn't, didn't come, s- I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't say I'm Robbie Ferguson. So she's like, What do I do? I don't even know. Who yeah. am I? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. She still didn't introduce herself. Do you, does anyone know who you are? Baberta. Baberta. It's interesting that we're drinking Spartacus. Ginger ale. There we go. Spartacus. Yes. Ginger ale. <laughs> any or any nows in the chat room yet? Be Peter who just came in. <laughs> Ginger ale. <laughs> Saw a, a really interesting kind of a puzzling issue this week which I wanted to share with you because it's something that I've never really thought of. What? <laughs> oh, uh, something, how to spell your name or something? <laughs> Is that what I'm about to share with the viewers? <laughs> I'd never really thought of how to do it and it was really interesting <laughs> to learn. Oh. Uh, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. Alrighty. She's Rachel Shu. We've got a unique situation arising for smartphone (laughs) users and smart device users. I mean, how many people use a device like this or a tablet? And what do we do? We set it so that it uses our Wi-Fi bandwidth, right? These things are getting smarter and smarter, better and better. And these days, for example, the iPhone, the iPod Touch, they actually synchronize. They use iCloud, and they even get their iOS updates as soon as you get access to, uh, to Wi-Fi. So you walk into the house and all of a sudden, oh, great, I'm syncing. Fantastic. Interesting case that we encountered this week. And I actually have a bit of a screen grab here. And, and uh, thought, uh, you know, the thought kind of goes out about businesses and you know, a company where you know, you've got, let's say, a one meg upstream connection, right? And Joe Blow user who works at the office walks into the office and all of a sudden their iPhone starts to sync to the server. They think nothing of it. It's in their pocket. Here we had a customer who has a one meg internet service and we didn't screen grab the whole thing. But you'll see here that their monowall is reporting. Here's their one meg line up at the top there. And you'll see that they actually got some spikes that approached that one meg line. This is what happened when somebody walked in with their iPhone and it began to sync to iCloud. So I I never really had thought about that before, Uh, but the reason that we were put on to this is because the customer actually contacted us and said, our internet is dreadfully slow right now, what is going on? And we got looking into it and couldn't believe that this person actually literally just walked in with their iPhone and it started to sync and it maxed out their upstream bandwidth and it was actually a flat line at the one meg mark. Didn't know, you know, nobody has the quality of service necessarily set up for their iDevices or their, their tablets and things like that. So just kind of made me think and, and uh, you know, maybe makes you think about uh, your, your Wi-Fi at the office, your Wi-Fi at home when you actually enter the building. Do you want that device? I actually ended up turning off my device tonight because I just didn't want to risk it because I've never really thought of that. I haven't either because I don't even own yeah. one. So, hmm, I wonder what happens. Hmm, wonder. I wonder. I'd be interested to know, <clears throat> pardon me, in the chat room, do you have a smart device where you, you maybe have never thought of this? The fact that as soon as you get access to Wi Fi, all of a sudden it starts doing something on your Wi Fi network. What would happen if it maxed out your, your broadband internet? Even just for, you know, five minutes as it synchronizes. Garby asks, Robbie, can't QOS be set up for everything not explicitly set up to be set to the lowest priority? Sure. Quality of service is a feature of some commercial routers, DDWRT upgrades, um, better router systems, monowall, of course. But do you, do you necessarily, does everyone necessarily have that set up? It's a great service for those in the know and who want to set that up. But in the meantime, when you're setting up your Wi-Fi on your, de- <coughs> on your device, how is that going to affect 
your internet connection when you enter the building. Just an interesting thought to me. But I am through the roof geeky. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Any questions for us in the chat room? Anything at all? Jot just chat arrived. Room's fine. Bye. Hey Jot. I was surprised. I'm like, this must be the first week ever he hasn't been here. Hmm. Mm. Any questions? <laughs> Hello, nerdlings of Roberta. The wonders of live TV. You did not know that she was going to say that. Nerdling. You're calling yourself a nerd all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's all right, see. well, we've got uh, news to head into. We've got lots of stuff to, uh, to get, uh, get rocking. Alrighty then. So let's see what kind of exciting stuff we've got today. Alrighty. A new spec-free 3D TV that tracks movement of viewers' faces is now available in the UK. The 55-inch Toshiba is the world's first large-screen glasses-free 3D TV available in our shops. Start saving now, though it'll cost more than £7,000, which is about $11,000 Canadian. <laughs> Nothing I'll be buying anytime soon. And like some digital cameras, it can recognize and follow faces, so when you move, it adjusts its picture to suit. I think that would be a bit annoying, though, if the screen's always... What would happen if there were, like, what if there were two people watching? <laughs> or, like, <laughs> it's Super Bowl Sunday! Come on over, guys! Whoa! Trippy! <laughs> Six faces in front of this thing, and it doesn't know what to do. But that said... Who's yeah. going to spend eleven thousand dollars on something that you know is going to come so down in price? Yeah, very quickly. But uh, it says it does direct different images to the left and right eyes. This creates the illusion that the image is three D. Mm. And this isn't the world's first spec-free three D TV. Two were launched at an electronics show in Japan in October 2010, but had much smaller screens at only about twelve inches and twenty inches. But these early models solve problems with picture quality if viewed at an angle. And now other manufacturers will be keen to enter the spec-free battle with Sony displaying two impressive prototypes at the Consumer Electronics Show back in July. So, should be interesting to see when that comes out. I was just works. thinking that the CES was in January. I don't know if that was... Yeah. Crazy thought. It was January that they announced it. Useless thought. Useless. Sorry. Well, July and January are two <laughs> very different things. It's like, wait a second. Bye, lady. All right. So, hackers identifying <laughs> themselves with AntiSec have attacked the website of Panda Labs anti malware products. It follows the recent arrest of an alleged member of the movement alongside others linked to the LUSEC hacking collective. The site's front page was replaced with a message saying, Love to LUSEC, AntiSec, Fallen Friends. It accused the firm of having helped police arrest other hackers last month. Panda denies the claim, however. Panda's lab's Spanish parent company, Panda Security, said it was investigating the intrusion, but said it could assure its customers that none of their information had been compromised. It added that an external server hosting some of Panda Lab's content had been targeted, with the site being replaced by an old Lulzik video. So, interesting. And also, your computer's operating system keeps track of what you do, and Ubuntu is setting out to give its users more control over what the OS can record. According to a Thursday blog post from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Ubuntu Linux 12.04, which is now in beta, will introduce new OS-wide privacy settings that gives users a way to delete portions of their activity log, disable logging altogether for certain files and applications, or completely disable activity logging across the board. Electronic Frontier Foundation web designer Michael Lee says, You can now delete your GNOME activity log from the past hour, day, week, a specific date range, or everything stored on your computer. And users can also choose to disable Ubuntu's logging of activity on their Pigeon Chat software, say, though they'd also have to disable Pigeon's own logging to eliminate all their chat history, Lee writes. To disable all activity logging on the computer, users can simply turn off the record, record activity switch, Ubuntu 12.04 will be released on April 26th. Does that interest you at all? It does, yeah. Does it? Sure does. Can't wait. And then also a headless robot, Dubchita, has set a new world speed record according to its owners. 
The U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency said the four-legged machine achieved 18 miles per hour on a laboratory treadmill. That's nothing compared to how fast Pyrus Rock walked to get on the show. <laughs> Do you have any like video of that or no? Of it going kulu kulu kulu. And uh, the agency said the previous land speed <laughs> record by a legged robot was 13.1 miles per hour. DARPA said that the project was part of efforts to develop robots designed to more effectively assist warfighters across a greater range of missions. What do you think if that was coming towards you at 30 miles an hour or 30 kilometers an hour? Hmm. Eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some of the other ones in motion, and they're quite ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Get the full stories at Category 5 TV Newsroom. The Category 5 TV Newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category 5 TV Newsroom, I'm Rachel Shu. Thanks, Rachel. Tonight's episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you by the official electrical company of Category 5, Quartery Electric. Find out more at quarteryelectric.com. Also, gardengatefarms.com for certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice. Visit them online, gardengatefarms.com. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. We've already been through this. How for many those times? Jot just got here. He doesn't know who you are. Poor Jot. I'm Rachel Shu, Jot, in case you didn't know yet. Rachel Shu. Rachel Shu. So what fabulous hey. PHP things do we have to we learn about today? We are learning about some fabulous PHP things. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to show you how to uh, get started on our, our, well, we're doing a, a series. We're going to be actually setting up a PHP application, uh, and we're going to do it live on the show. Uh, but it's giving you an opportunity. As always, I'm going to provide for you the source code and everything so that you can actually follow along. Uh, you don't need much. All you need is a server or a computer with PHP installed and Apache to be able to connect to that computer. And we're going to walk you through how to set up. Tonight, we're going to start with uh, basically setting up an image array. Do you approve? All right. Here's the thing. Rachel, <laughs> you are my proxy. If you don't learn something tonight, I'm at fault. Okay? If I'm speaking over your head and nobody stands up for you, that's Rachel's fault. So, Rachel, you need to be my proxy. You need to... Well, I just wrote, what's a proxy? Is that a student? <laughs> 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 Let's just take a moment. <laughs> Drink. Too bad it's only ginger ale. <laughs> You're going to have to really layman's terms it. <sighs> Rachel, all the information needs to flow through you. <laughs> and if I'm not making any sense, you need to stop that information flow and say, hold up. What does that mean? Wait a second. I don't understand. That could Can you take, explain that a little that further? That could take quite a while, though. We'll be here for 10 hours. Okay, I haven't even got past the first sentence yet, Rachel. Can you explain it <laughs> For goodness sake, Rachel, it's echo, hello, world, <laughs> semicolon. Please. <laughs> uh, we're going to get a little more advanced than that tonight. Uh, I'm going to make the assumption that you know a little bit about PHP, but or especially a little bit about HTML, but it doesn't really matter uh, because as long as you follow along, you're going to understand what's going on. That's the hopes. I've got a folder here, Rachel. Yay. There we go. Got a couple of images here. Huh. You're so much more creative than I. <laughs> okay. It's not GIMP's fault that I can't draw, just so you know. Tonight we're going to take that, we're going to put it into an image array, and we're going to actually cycle through that. I'm going to show you what that means. So let's get started. First of all, bring up our website, cat5.tv slash webdev. That's where our web development takes place, and you will see there, there's a file called blankindex.zip. That's a helpful little file that, uh, that you want to get your hands on because it just gives you a starting point. It's just an index file. So when I open that, it's got some of the base stuff already set up for us. So we've got a 
you know, all the HTML tags open and close. So tonight we're going to get started with creating our array. First of all, you'll notice everything here pretty much is HTML, not PHP. Within our body of the HTML, that's where we're going to actually put our PHP. Whenever we open and, and close PHP, that's how we do it. Okay, it's important to, uh, you know, we're going to try to stick to form tonight, and we're going to create an array for these images. So, first of all, what I'm going to do, let's get those images up on our server, and I'm going to give you a place that you can look. Anytime that we work on web development here at Category 5, we stick it up at uh, demo.cat5.tv and create a folder called 011. So if you want to go to demo.cat5.tv slash 011, and I'm going to upload those images. Here we go. There, so those are up. There's a few people here saying that the screen has paused when you opened up PHP thingamadoodle. Okay. There we are. Demo.cat5.tv slash 011 slash images. Okay? So there's our images that we're going to be incorporating into our PHP array. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this file. This is going to be our index file for this particular array. I'm going to save that. Uh, I'll put that on my desktop for the moment, but we're going to actually upload that to our server. And as I say, you're going to need a, a spot to host these files. You can get that through uh, cat5.tv slash webdev. You'll see there's a great deal there. Uh, or, of course, if you've got your own hosting or have just installed PHP 5 on your system. Now what I've done is I've uploaded index.php so I can edit that directly on the server. All right. So first things first, we know that we've got images in the images folder. We've got one, two, three, and four. So we're going to create an array. And basically what an array is, it's a map of information that has uh, values associated with the keys of that information. So if I say I've got an array called dollar sign Rachel, and in that array I've got Rachel image, I've got Rachel uh, number, I've got Rachel file, something like that. You'll understand that in just a minute. You're ready to understand that, right? Yes. Yes. Just like I've understood everything thus far. Well, you, you're my proxy, remember? Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna call this our image images array. So this is. It looks like a string right now, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it into an array like that. Okay. Watch what happens here. I'm gonna go. Dollar sign v is gonna be our counter. We're gonna start it at zero, and we're gonna increment that. So what we're gonna do. We're going to say images dollar sign v, and at the bottom here, let's say we go increment that. So that is the same as saying v equals v plus one. All right, for short form, v plus plus. So now, don't copy that v equals zero because we never want to reset that now. If I do this, right, then I've got null values for images 0, images 1, because v was incremented right here, and then images 2 at the bottom here, because v was already incremented here. So let's go file. All right, so we're going to go, let's create an association on that array, a key. So file equals images one.jpg. Okay? So our first part of the array says images dollar sign v which we know is equal to 0 and the file is images 1.php. Now let's do the same thing over here. images 2.jpg and Rachel if there are questions in the chat room that are applicable to this then feel free to pass those along and if you have any questions just get in the chat room there. We're going to yeah, need one more. Yeah, nothing so far. Okay, I can copy this. We're going to go four. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually output that so that you can see. Print R means I'm going to show the values of that array. Okay. 
I'm going to save that to the server and let's see what happens. Refresh. And you'll see that now we have an array within our body, and that's in fact what it looks like. So array 0, file, images, 1.jpg, 1, file, 2.jpg. See where I'm getting that? Okay, so now we've got a, associations with these keys. So if I call the array, which is called images, and I call this the key number 3, the file in that key is going to be file number 4. So watch what happens now. If I go echo, which is basically to create output, image source, look at the HTML that I'm doing here. Um, good guy asked, why didn't you use the v variable as a subscript and avoid duplicating the code? We're because I want to show I want we're starting with the bare minimums here. We're going to really get started with the basics, and we can grow from there. So what I'm doing here now, let's set something up that's static. Notice what I let's pretend that I've got image source equals quote quote. All right. And our command with a se uh, apostrophe semicolon. Notice that this output is within two apostrophes. Okay, and within here, within these two quotes, I'm going to go apostrophe dot apostrophe, and in here I'm going to go dollar sign images. Let's say three file. Okay, so you understand what's going to happen there? Is it's actually going to put in the file name for dollar sign images 3 which is not file 3 it's in fact 0 1 2 3 it's going to be the fourth image in our set so if i save that and refresh it's the fourth image okay so what we can do now here's what's amazing this is the magic of a php array watch what we can do now there's a couple we we could get into while statements and things but we don't have time for uh, to understand the difference between while and for each. So we're going to actually loop through that array now that we've created it, and we're going to output all four of those images uh, dynamically. So we're going to go for each, okay, which is basically a loop through this array. And we're saying the array is images. We don't really need to know um, what the key is, so the number, the 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, so we'll just go value, let's say. Okay, so what's happening there is that I'm going to loop through my array and I'm going to assign value to what's found. So if I'm currently at images four, uh, 3, the value is going to contain file equals images 4. Okay, so watch what happens here. I'm going to go, I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to go echo. dollar sign value. Uh, let's do a print r so you can really get what I'm saying here. Print r dollar sign value. Okay. And what that's going to do, I'm going to echo a, a br as well. Oh. Let's echo a br, which is a pay, uh, you know, carriage return. There we go. Okay. If I refresh that, it's going to give me the file names the through that loop. So you see it's it's created four outputs because it's looping through. All right. So what I can do with that, and once you grasp this, it, it's it's so incredibly powerful that you can do so much with this, and we're really, really starting basic here. What I need to do is I need to change this because we're no longer looping through images. We've got dollar sign value. So what we want to do is we want to go image sources value file. Okay. Let's save that upload and refresh and you'll see that it's actually loaded all four images okay let's take it one step further so that we can understand more how the array associates itself how the values are associated with the output of four each if you have questions from the chat room you just let me know okay so let's go images this is where arrays get exciting because watch this Okay. 
So now I've created a second key within you know, the first time through that dollar sign V. So dollar sign V is equal to zero at this point. So the description that's associated with this particular key in the array is now image one. And I've also got a file. So if I were to print R that, watch the difference here. There it is. So now my array looks like this. See that? But it's the only one that has a description. The rest do not. So we're going to take that. We're going to add a carriage return after every image. Let's make it two, just to keep things real clean and simple. So now it's going to look like this. And what we're going to do is right after this image outputs, we're going to go echo carriage return, which is a BR, okay, semicolon. Now an if statement. Here's our first if statement. If is set dollar sign value description echo dollar sign value description, okay. Our first image now has both the image and the description below it. The subsequent images are just images because we didn't assign descriptions to those. So that's the very most basic kind of look at how an array is going to work for us. But what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to turn this into kind of like a full gallery component so that we can click on those images and they're going to bring up a, a bigger image, for example. So the, the power of a PHP array allows us to do basically like flat file databasing. It allows us to cycle through data in such a way that we can interpret it, we can output it to our website, and it just it makes for a, a really outstanding way to understand uh, data in PHP and uh, also to be able to send that data to, um, to cookies, be able to send that to databases, be able to interpret databases as arrays, and it'll lead to some pretty cool stuff. Yes, it all makes perfect sense now. Perfect sense. Questions in the chat room at this point? Uh, again, the source code for that is going to be made available to you in the show notes of episode number 234. And again, that is just the very quick entry level of uh, cycling through a PHP array. So if you're not even at entry level... Well, we're going to get you there. Pre-entry level is where I'm about <laughs> at. This is how you turn your computer on, this big button here. I don't get it, man. Any uh, questions in the chat room with regards to uh, PHP at this point? Getting things started? <laughs> Didn't catch any, eh? Nothing yet. Okay, well, we'll move along then. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope that uh, I hope that you're able to follow along with this series and and enjoy what you're seeing. I, I try not to get too technical with with a lot of the stuff that we do on the show, but there is a growing demand for uh, this yeah, type of not technical feature. at all. Well, like I say, the 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 code is going to be made available to you. So uh, hopefully, using that and then following along with the video as well, all of a sudden you're going to realize that wow, this stuff actually makes sense. And if you have questions, I mean, next week, maybe you will have looked at that code. Maybe you will have uh, tried it for yourself. And at that point, maybe that will raise some questions for you. So Alcat has a question. He says, do you intend to continue with PHP, especially with OOP PHP? I, I don't know how you mean. Like, am I going to continue programming in PHP? Absolutely. No questions about the feature itself? And uh, with that, um, we'll say, you know, if you have any other questions, as far as object-oriented, we're, we're looking at arrays right now tonight, but we'll be looking at objects as well, for sure. Has anyone else sent in any stop motion animation or anything they've done? Well, we haven't done stop motion in a while, but uh, we haven't seen any. Yeah, like I say, Dave Maydew will be looking at object-oriented PHP down the road if, if that there's a demand for that, but I mean, we need to understand the bare minimums at uh, the base 
you know, yeah. arrays are kind of an entry level compared to object orientation. So, cool. Well, I'd love to receive a couple questions. We got like ten minutes here, folks. And being a live show, I, I here's your opportunity. This is it. Any question? What's new with you? With Here's me? my question. Yeah, we haven't got really oh, much time to chat tonight. So. Not too much. Just yeah. doodling and drawing. And what are you drawing these days? Know. Getting ready more, for more cartoons. Making a an Easter cartoon for Cat Five. Excellent. The uh, cartoon tonight that you saw that Rachel created, um, the one where she's drawing in the gimp. You can get that off of our photo gallery, category5.tv. Just follow the link. All right, so uh, no questions. I can't believe it. Like, uh, like I mean, real questions. I, uh, there's a lot of opinion <laughs> questions in the chat room. Well, are you going to do this? Are you going to do? Are you going to try that? Are you going to do that? Do you like this? Do you like that? Um, but uh, what what we want is your real, genuine questions with regards to, you know, what 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 tech questions do you have that are that are troubling you or that you don't really know the answer to or or that I can help you with. I want to be more help than just giving you opinion polls, right? So uh, did the time change affect viewers who wanted to watch Definitely. the live show? Yeah. But it, See, Jot's a bit about, annoyed about that. Sorry, Jot. Follow me on That's Twitter. That's why he was late. Follow us on Twitter, Category 5 TV, down there on Twitter. Uh, myself, there I am, Robbie Ferguson. Oh, I'm short tonight. <laughs> and you would have known. And also, folks, we do have a really cool feature on our website, Category 5.tv slash timezones.php that'll show you what time we are live every week in your area <clears throat> hey Dave Maydew good guy Alket cool. cricket cricket yeah. what's new in your life with computers and everything I don't have twitter Jameson yeah, you need to I get don't, Twitter. I don't know if anyone would want to follow what I'm doing all day. <laughs> uh, Atari Man 5000 wants to know, what can you really store in an array? And, and while we started with very kind of basic, you know, single level, single tiered array tonight, um, it's pretty much limitless as far as what you can put in there. And the way that you can structure it and the way that you can um, flow through that data even so much as just creating, you know, a, a nice output for kind of spreadsheet layouts on your screen and stuff. Um, we'll we'll kind of look at that kind of stuff, and we're going to look at how um, looping through that array is going to allow us to manipulate the way that our our site looks. Also, just data collection, uh, being able to grab stuff from a like you think about our website uh, to to put it into perspective what an array can do. When you go to the show notes of our site. Um, each line of the show notes is, is part of an array and it's all output to you. When you look at the chat logs, each line of the chat logs, that's all part of an array and it's output and colorized based on the the array, right? Um, Michael Iowa says, Robbie, can we play Category 5 live on the Boxy Box? Boxy. Um, I, I don't think live... You might be able to add the RSS feed if you've got the ability to add RSS feeds. I, we don't have a specific app for the Boxy Box. I know now that we're a part of the uh, the Tech Podcast Network, uh, you're going to see us on the Roku and things like that. Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure about Boxy at this point. I know, unfortunately, our one of our syndicates, Blip TV, is pulling out of some of the syndication uh, areas, and that is going to leave, you know, Boxy in the dust and things like that. Can you? You you have the ability, good guy says, to add an RSS feed to Boxy. So uh, get onto our website, category5.tv, uh, or if you want to get straight to there, it's cat5.tv slash RSS. And from there, you'll see a list of the different feeds that are available to you. And uh, best one to get would probably be, uh, well, let's bring it up. It's going to be the H.264 cat5.tv slash rss is just a hot link that's going to take you there there you go the one that says recommended for non-hd that's going to give you a, a reasonable quality file pardon me the hd 
H.264 is going to give you the the full uh, 720p. So you may want that if you if you have an HD TV. If you're using like a CRT TV connected to your boxy box, just go with the uh, SD because that's all your television can handle anyway. So be a slightly smaller download. And uh, Raffer asks, uh, my Pogo plug loses his connection from time to time after the 24-hour reconnect and doesn't get it back. Ideas, I normally unplug the power and put it back in. Yeah, that's weird. Um, is that a 24-hour reconnection, what, what's causing that? Is that a part of your ISP? Is that a part of your uh, router? Can you fill us in on that? Because typically the Pogo plug is going to stay connected as long as it has an internet connection. If it's dropping out, there's something up with your internet or something that's causing it to, to lose its connection there. Let us know. Um, are the Cat5 episodes downloadable from the Cat5 website? They are. Are all episodes available? Yes. Um, but here's, here's where it can get confusing because people look at, like for example, you bring up the HD feed and you say, well, I can't find episode 10. Or 11. That's a little joke for Garby. Um, but the thing is, is that back then we didn't have HD, right? So if you want some of those really early episodes, you need to step away from the HD feed and get into uh, one of the low quality feeds because that's what they were broadcast in at that time. So they're on Miro Internet TV. Uh, we're going to see syndication across multiple different platforms coming up. Uh, they're on YouTube. So you can search for them for sure. Are they available streaming directly off of our website? On the current website, that's not the case. Uh, we are currently doing beta testing on uh, the V3 website, which is very, very exciting. This is our new version of the website, which is coming out, out as soon as it's ready. And the intention is to have every single episode that ever uh, was available recorded. Episode 11 is the exception um, due to a computer crash at that time where we lost the files. Um, so every episode except for one of the entire, you know, 234 episodes are going to be available for you on the new website. All right, and uh, Raffer just said, uh, yes, it is part of the ISP, I guess. Your ISP, actually. So we're backing up a little bit to that, uh, that router restarting every 24 hours. That is annoying. And, and as far as that goes, I mean... If you're in the middle of a connection, you'd, you'd lose your connection at that time, right? Can, it, does your ISP force that, or can you request that they stop that? And can you confirm that it's not a feature of your, your router? I, had, I was looking at a customer's site once where they said that, uh, that they were losing connection on a regular basis. And I went into their router, and it turned out that they had a setting set up to automatically restart their router once a day. So I would encourage you to double check on that just in case. If, um, if on the other hand, it is your ISP, ask them if they can stop doing that. But it may be they they may be trying to prevent people from doing the exact thing that you're doing. So tough to say, my friend. And uh, there's really, if it's locking things up, there's really no way around that, right? Hmm. Sorry. watching the chat room here folks for those of you who are <laughs> watching after the fact it flies by thanks everybody it was fun tonight hope you had a good time i certainly learned a lot did you mm -hmm. you're, tons, gonna, you're gonna know tons. tons about php when this is all said and done you gotta watch back though yeah i don't i don't even know if watching i'll just <laughs> i'll just <laughs> A. Jameson, 5579, says, well, if you lost episode 11, you could reenact it. And that's exactly what episode 12 is. So go back and you'll see. And I probably talked about it at the time. Or yeah, maybe it was 14 or something Garby is mentioning. We did, we did do a make good. So that was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, you doodle. Still worrying about it. Oh, you need to make People up still mention it, yeah. That was back in DOS. <laughs> <laughs> Linux 1.6, something like that. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. That was back when uh, Lindos was still in existence. <laughs> Linspire. Brilliant. I remember that. Yeah. 
Well, hey, everybody. Uh, thanks. Do send in your questions. We didn't get a lot of questions tonight, and, and trying to keep up with the chat room is tough. Uh, but you can email us through the week live at category5.tv. This here is an amazing device. It's called a telephone, and we now have one. And it works. It's got a dial tone. You can give us a call. It's 2545 cat 5 tv that rings in texas and it gets forwarded way up here uh, so give us a call 2545 cat 5 tv and you have a great week thanks for being here ray yep nice being here again happy st patty's day yep. everybody and uh we'll see you next tuesday night Bye.